Meeting's been called to order at 1804. Do you want to review last meeting's minutes? April 26, 2018. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Whew, so, I can't believe how smooth that works. Okay. Zex report. Director's report. From the top. Uh, paramedic Gary Potts, who is actually in the building working tonight, uh, has been working with the Senior Center first at a fall risk assessment thing, trying to coordinate with them and developing a protocol for assessing people that might be at a fall risk. Um, and that segued into kind of a larger needs assessment, not only for people visiting the Senior Center, but also people that we encounter who could benefit from additional um, resources. Um, something that we can't provide on EMS, but maybe Triad can provide, or Meals on Wheels, or things like that. So, we don't have a state community paramedicine program yet, but this is kind of our way of trying to mm -hmm. jumpstart something like that in the three towns. So, what we did, um, because we run and control our own patient care reporting software, I was able to add some specific questions. Um, and right now, they're a little vague, but they're kind of in the, in the idea of, could this person benefit from additional resources? And then in our narrative that the, our crews normally fill out, they'll go on to elaborate. Our department, um, AJ Muzuki, my deputy, he's also working tonight, he does 100% CQI, so he reviews every single call that we do, yeah. and part of that job will be to see those questions that have been answered, read the narrative, and then see about um, referring the individuals <coughs> to additional resources. Um, part of it is to get those individuals the resources they need, but also by building this database of, of not individuals and their needs, but overall how many people and in, in what areas and what type of needs they could use from, we could then use to help figure out you know, what type of programs we might want to add in our department. So. Right. Yeah, that's that's very very exciting, and um, it's uh, it's great that we can do it. Sunderland is celebrating their 300th anniversary yeah. next month. Really? That's exciting with a that whole weekend exciting. full of activities. Uh, that's the 15th, 16th, and 17th. There's going to be a very large parade on the 16th from one in the afternoon to three, Please and two hours. At least, it sounds like. So I met with the other public safety department heads and the emergency management director in Sunderland earlier this week about what they anticipate what's going on. I'm developing an uh, incident action plan and filling out our incident command structure for the event. We're going to have additional crews on. And I've already reached out to some other departments for some resources committed to EMS. So. Uh, we're going to use this as a pre-planned event that will help us train f for an emergency in the future. We're going to exercise all these ideas and policies and procedures, and uh, hopefully um, it'll go off without a hitch. Right. Um, I just wanted to, um, if, it, if, it's, if we're worried about heat, um, the Homeland Security Region 1 has those um, Mr. Those inflatable Mister. Okay. Yep. Um, things. I I think they're down in Springfield, but I'm not sure. All you'd have to do is go on the web page and see who has them. That's for sec. Yeah. Um, we got them a couple of years ago for when uh, they had the Westover events because it yep. was really hot one year and people were dropping like flies. So I would kind of think recommend calling yep. them up and reserving them, and then if the weather just don't ever pick, you know, call them and cancel it if the weather's going to be okay. Yeah, right now, that's our main concern is would be a heat-related yeah. incident. Um, yeah. So that's that's primarily where my, my IAP focus is. I think I there's believe. two of them. But I know for yeah. sure there's one um, that would, is available for loaning. Great. Right. But I think there's two. So you could have them on two different spots. Awesome. Um, wherever you're set up. Love it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see, first batch of Union 38 school staff received the Stop the Bleed training and emergency response training. Um, that was held, not just them, but other school people from the area, including private schools in Deerfield. Um, that was held down in Northampton, and then we're having a second training, um, which I'll be teaching at later in the month uh, for 
the additional people who couldn't make the first train. <coughs> and we've got the, uh, let's see, Deerfield Elementary School Fun Fair is this Saturday? Yes? Yeah. What time? Can you, do you remember? Nine? Well, it's not because Deerfield Mile runs at nine, I believe, and then the Fun Fair starts at 10 and it goes to 1.30. Great. Uh, South County EMS will be there. Um, we'll also be at the Sunderland uh, Touch a Truck event at the Public Library and Waitley Fire Department has organized a public safety day or safety day I guess at the Waitley Elementary School. So we're gonna have lots of demonstrations and things like that. It's an all-day affair and all of the grades at the elementary school will be involved with demonstrations and tours and playing with equipment. So we're looking forward to that. Some busy months, some busy months. All right, and the meat and potatoes, the new facility. <laughs> uh, we officially accepted the donation of the building yesterday and the keys and the paperwork were handed off this morning. And it is insured for $1 million uh, with $150,000 in contents and it's $466 a year. Based 466. On our, based on our current discount. That's great. Um, the open house, which the invites and flyers have gone out to the town administrators, clerks, um, everyone else, DA, Allstate Asphalt, uh, there's a Facebook event for it. Um, everybody's invited. We're uh, encouraging Deerfield Center and Waitley residents to come by. We're going to have a dedication ceremony at 9 a.m. Uh, and we'll say some words and do a little dedication and then immediately following to uh, 2 p.m. will be the open house. So the staff will be on hand, we'll have our equipment, we'll have some treats and things like that available. So come by, meet our staff, see the facility, and, and uh, come visit with us. So we're looking forward. Um, we don't have any sort of date or anything planned for when we're gonna move operations over. There's too many moving pieces still. We still need a license from the Department of Public Health in order for us to store medications there. Yeah. Um, we need to make sure that the phones ring and that we have internet connectivity since all of our patient care reports are posted in the cloud and things like that. Um, once we get a better idea about when these things are gonna be in place, um, I see the transition kind of being two phases. The first phase will be to bring our second and third ambulances over here um, and in the building once they can be secured and we're licensed to have them here. Um, and that will allow us to kind of be local, right? Like, so, or like centrally located. Then phase two, once we have an idea about all the little incidental stuff, we'll make a plan for when we're actually going to move operations over. And that'll be scheduling the telephones to ring in the right spot and, and things like that. Again, it's too early to kind of know what those dates are going to be, um, but hopefully um, we won't have to wait very long. Uh, quite a few things have already been... Um, sourced um, or obtained for the new building. Um, and there's three groups of things here. The first one are things that have been sourced, we are budgeted for, um, and are included in that $50,000 that the BOO authorized out of the operational reserve funds. Um, and these are all the things that we would need to move operations over. So telephone uh, and fax, <coughs> Um, internet uh, with IT and network security, the telephone set up, um, access control, the physical security to the building, exterior building signs, uh, kitchen appliances, uh, and the installation of those were donated. Um, we also have uh, Atlantic Furniture. Um, I haven't met with them, but I have a commitment from them that they wish to donate that's the wonderful. bunk room and the kitchen stuff for. Great. Um, so yeah, so that's great. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, fire alarm monitoring is set up, operational, tested, so that's all set. We have the building insurance all set up. The emergency generator, the specifications for that were given to us by DA and their electrician. The town of Deerfield, Kevin Scarborough, is purchasing a generator for the town hall. 
So with the specifications provided for us, he's going to do a double purchase or a group purchase or something like that. Um, so we can get both of those at the same time. And that installation um, will be donated uh, by Deerfield Academy. Great. Um, and electricity and propane um, were transferred as of today. Um, so all of those things um, are basically what we need to move in, um, be able to move operations over. Uh, what that leaves and kind of the, the additional things that we're going to need, um, but we currently aren't budgeted for out of that 50,000 would be any of the um, remaining office furniture stuff. So anything not being able to be donated currently or anything we don't have here. Um, miscellaneous building supplies, so your mops, um, paper towel dispensers, floor mats. Storage cabinets and shelving. Uh, we have some storage cabinets, but right now we're using a closet with shelves in it here, so we don't have anything to pull over. There is provisions for a washer and dryer, like overhead combo hookup over there. The installation will, will be donated by Deerfield Academy for the final uh, tie-in. Uh, the AV equipment for our meeting, operation center, training room, and any sort of security camera or the intercom system uh, would still need to be done. Um, we might be able to use FCAP money for that because um, we would want all our meetings to be publicized. So um, I, I don't know. Obviously, we have to bring it up at a selectman's meeting, but yeah. um, we do have enough FCAP money that, um, to me, making it sure that you can have public meetings there would, make, would make, be good use of that kind of money. So that's how you could get... Which part is... What are you talking about? The, a, the AV, EOC, you know, room cameras and all that kind of stuff. So you could sit up and, you know, do your video taping or whatever. I mean, so someone doesn't have to come with a, yeah. their own camera or to already yeah, set up. Yeah, sure. Whatever. So to me, whatever you need for that, let's spec it out and make sure that we could okay. make an you know, an application to our, sure. our, our fund money, because we, we have some residual money in there. Okay. Do um, think, the only thing, Carol, is going to be appropriated at town meeting. Um, they changed, they changed the law. Yeah, you're right. They just did that, didn't they? It, uh, and, and it's a good idea. But we, we just have, have to, but we <coughs> have, um, we had to figure out some way, some, we just had to figure we're out gonna some have way. A June, we're going to have a June, we're going to have a June town meeting so special town meeting so we could do yeah that. and that's not necessary <coughs> for us to operate or anything so if there's yeah but doesn't we, need to happen we can just look into it and see if yeah, yeah there yeah. was a way that it would qualify absolutely um we've got a meeting set up already uh, we've got accounts with staples and wb mason for the building stuff the office supplies um, hey, hey zach when yeah you, when you order that stuff do you how, how do you order it? For instance, if you were to buy a case of water, how much does that cost you? Do you know offhand? I don't know. And we actually don't order a lot of those things now because we're leasing space yeah. from the building. So all those incidental stuff are things we don't have any experience ordering. Because I'm just wondering because um, an entity like us should be able to use like the Massachusetts Higher Ed Consortium uh, bid package uh, and and theoretically all municipalities can use that and they can use any of the state bids that are out there uh, so I, I would I know the university <laughs> yep for instance if we were to buy a case of water from you know the 16 ounce or 20 ounce bottles from we use office depot is like two bucks okay for a case of water wow. all right uh, toiletries, you know, uh, you can get the, the paper products, uh, a big paper, toilet paper, stuff like that, and you're paying pennies a roll. Sure. So maybe maybe we can, I can show you how to do that. Okay? Yeah, give me information. Um, I'm meeting with their reps next week, so I'll, I'll inquire if they have any information from their end. But. Yeah, get talk to Office Depot also, okay. and and ask them about the 
uh, MHEC, M H E C uh, bid. And sure. If, you could, if, if we can piggyback on that, we may, we may be able to save a lot of money in that, that Great. respect. Did, did they put in um, water access for a for a water dispenser in, in the building or no? Or are we going to have to use the, the five gallon jug or whatever they are? I don't, we have running water over there? Well, of course, but you know, what I'm you know what I'm talking about. Water the cooler, water like, they're a special, rather than having the jug, it comes oh. through the, the, the pipe and it's a cooled, it's just more environmentally friendly, that's all. I'm yeah, can we put one in that front too right now? I think. Yeah, I don't, like I a don't, water bottle thing? Yeah, but you can also, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, a hydration station. Yeah. yeah. There's there's hydration nothing station. like that over there. There's no, there's no there's piping for it. Huh? Or anything. Not that I'm aware of. So you'll have to get the five gallon. Or no, we don't want to get bottled. Spare. We don't want to or get tap water. Is what I was going to say. Or tap about. water. Yeah. Right. But it's just yeah. not cool. No. Yeah. And people are going to want to get it cold. Right. Yeah. But just as long as we're not getting bottled water. Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Well, so it was another town. So. Just got rid of bottled water. Right? Well, we, don't don't like, we don't like. That was water. not even on my radar. That's right. something I was thinking about. We don't like bottled water. Um, bottled water. Right. And then yeah. let's see. So I've got for the. There are some things like the storage cabinets, <laughs> racks, or things like that. I don't even know yet, you know, short of, I haven't been in there with a tape measure. I don't know exactly what we need. Um, I did have Valley Communication respond based on um, a state bid for the, they spec'd a camera system for the building, um, which is the exterior of the building, um, plus the common rooms, common hallways, and the bay, and are secured, um, like medication storage room and stuff, um, and a video intercom with that. And they also spec'd a presentation set up for that training EOC room in one. Kind of like this? Um, yeah, so instead of an overhead, which requires you to turn the lights off and the bulbs burned out, it's just, and you'll see the room, it's small. It'll just be a screen on the wall yep. um, with those hookups. Um, and we do, now we have continuing education requirements, base state, who we're affiliated with now does um, video conferencing versions of it. Oh. So we don't have to go to locations anymore. We can actually host those in-house and meet our requirements, but it would require that we have a setup to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, so they did one quote for that room, and then he, because he's a nice guy, threw in a second quote, which would include um, basically enough equipment for an overflow area. So if you had a larger training that wouldn't fit in the, in the one training room, you could have people in the other room and everything in the area. Or the other thing that he pointed out was, I can't imagine we're ever going to be operating it as you know an EOC very commonly, but it allows you to have some people in one room and then segregate other people in another room and, and share the information. So those quotes, they are multi-page long. Um, I did print out a couple of them. Um, if people want to see it, I can forward it, but they did provide those. Um, and everything in that second category are, are I feel, especially the, the furniture, the storage shelves, um, and the building supplies are near future. We don't, we don't need full furniture and stuff like that to move in, but definitely near term um, and would require a approval of the boot to spend more of those operational reserves in order to accomplish that stuff. Exact. Uh, yeah. One of the things I would recommend is that you don't buy everything right right away. Yeah. Um, because there are there are many people out there that like businesses in town that are redecorating uh, that'll donate their yeah. their used furniture or so so it may be prudent to wait a little while just to see and and, and just and it's just let people know that you're you know what you're looking for have mm -hmm. a list so um, that they would yeah. that they would donate. I, I in, in the past we we we've gotten stuff like that in Sunderland for the that basically some guy was outfitting uh, his office and gave us all his old office furniture, which to us was brand new. So, yeah, sure. That's good. So I, we just may want to wait and yeah. not not try to yeah. get that all up right. Yes, yeah. know what you want, know what you need. Gonna... Yeah, well, I was well, and that's right. I'll, that's your, and Jonathan's right. You may it is better to find out what you actually need as well. Yeah. Well, I'm anticipating the open house will be a good opportunity for you know people, people to kind of see, see what, what you know where our holes need. are as far as as furniture and equipment and things like that. Um, and the very last category here is something that 
I have a ballpark idea, but no quotes. Nobody's been in there yet, um, only because we haven't had access to the building. And that is the diesel um, exhaust system um, and uh, a it's a personnel notification system. The, the two things, the two hazards for public safety are the diesel fumes, the carcinogens in that, um, and the adrenaline dumps, the cortisol dumps, dumps when the tones go off in the middle of the night. When you hear about firefighters having heart attacks, it's because they were woken up in the middle of the night and they have to jump on that truck and they, and they have to respond. They get those heart attacks on the way to the call, not at the call. And Northampton just installed one of these systems and it's, it's becoming the standard, which is when we are notified, instead of our pagers alerting like we're used to and, and jarring us awake, um, it's designed that you know it'll it'll raise the lights in the room and there'll be a tone that will bring you up out of sleep gradually but quickly in a way that you don't get that same adrenaline dump. So I wanted to look into having one of those systems for the building. We could stay up all night, or we could just stay up all night. Great cards. Um, Clean, clean bathroom. Then there's some wash the floors. Yeah. Um, so that is that Fortnite. that Fortnite. third Fortnite. category yeah, down the road. Um, I don't know it's even what we're looking at there, but um, on my radar. And that's where we are with the building. I think if there aren't any questions, may we have a tour? We may. Um, <clears throat> I think should we adjourn the meeting then for yes. the tour? Yes. Yeah. Well, are, do, are we going to? Oh, have we're not allowed to adjourn the meeting technically, yeah. just off camera. We could. No, you would. You would. You uh, adjourn with. Uh, so you 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 reconvene to uh, adjourn without any votes, uh, any additional votes taken. Um, uh, what else do we have to come before do, the board? Do we tonight? do we need a meeting next month? Summer do vacation. We, do we kind of? Do you want to go on a summer schedule? Yeah, well, I, I was going to suggest that maybe we, we, we test out the possibility of just switching to bi-monthly meetings anyway. We're in a new building. Um, I, I'm just not convinced that, that, that <coughs> something arises. Me. Unless something arises, of course, but I'm not yeah. sure that Zach needs to be micromanaged on a monthly basis. I think he's doing a great job, and these guys are doing a great job. And bi-monthly, maybe and we can try, test out the summer into the fall to see if that makes yeah. sense. I, I, I Let's think a meeting in July would be fine. Um, so that we can maybe review the, uh, the mm -hmm. closeout budgets and stuff, see, yeah. see where we stand, um, and then and have a meeting in July, then not in August, and, and start in September again. And see what happens. And, yeah. And, and see if that, what happens. Good. But I, I would prefer that we July. Um, yeah. try to do so at least we start meeting again September. in September, October, yeah. so that for we can get re ready for the budget season. Yeah. With yeah. Ahead of it. That's yeah. We'll meet in September. Yeah. yeah. By the bi-monthly thing, anyway, and then we'll evaluate whether October is necessary. We'll we'll put look we'll put in uh, July for us, Chuck. The twelfth. Twelfth is the second Thursday. Nineteenth is the third Thursday. The third we've the got a. <coughs> well, the third is a select. Well, the last the twenty sixth is a Frank County Select Board Association meeting. The nineteenth there's just an e-board meeting, but uh, we could meet earlier if you wanted. <coughs> We okay. could do it. Well, it, so the 12th, the 12th would be good if we could, Trevor. Okay. I mean, uh, I, yep. the 19th, the mayor, 12th. The 12th. The 12th. Yeah, I, I won't be there, but that's okay. Because 19th and 26th, we got, uh, yeah. we're, we're all at that other thing. Right, unless we wanted to do a 5 o'clock meeting here and then move the 6.30, e-board to yeah, 6.30. you could do that on the 19th. I'm just saying, yeah, I, uh, you know, not to get personal, it's my anniversary on the 12th, so I will not oh. be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't be the first one. Well, bring your wife. We'll bring your wife. Yeah, she would yeah. love that. <laughs> if you want to do that, that's fine. I'll do that. I'm, that's I'm okay fine doing the 19th. The 12th, uh, I might be a little bit late because I'm coming back from Boston. 19th? So the 19th, 19th works at five. good at 5, and then we could go up and have a 6 yeah. o'clock meeting. 6 30. What? We'll just do 6 30. Give yeah. people a chance to get out. 6 30. Yeah. Well, yeah, since most of the board and, is right and we'll here. We'll have our meeting at 6 30 at, at our new building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're going to have it on the 19th at 5 o'clock. Is that okay? Is that okay with you, Zach? That sounds totally appropriate and wonderful. Okay. And then we're going to, and then we're having our meeting, our 6 o'clock meeting is being changed to 6.30. Is that correct? Uh, uh, up at, for, for um, e-board. E-board. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. 5 o'clock here. That's okay with you. 5 o'clock across the parking lot. Yes. Okay. Nope. Okay. 
Well, 88 Greenfield Road. Got it. Okay. okay. Bosses. We can come anytime. Well, you had something to say, Tom? Uh, no, we, we should, by July we should be, everything should be worked out, right, Zach? We'll be in there? Yeah. We should be in there by July? For a meeting? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I would oh, hope. Two or three weeks. Yeah, the stuff no, that, I think. Something Zach mentioned. Two or three weeks. Mass. No, not at all. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's open <laughs> chair. Yeah. Told him we could work Who's doing all, hey, Zach, who's doing all your IT stuff? Uh, Valley Communications, okay. and then some well, vendors from them. Can you give me the quote for the Valley Communications? Yeah. Any other business to come before the board? Thank you, Zach, for doing a great job. Thank As always, you, thank you. Guys, you're no, doing see. a good um, job. Let me just look at it and maybe we can see about the cable stuff. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't say FCAT. I shouldn't mm -hmm. say FCAT. I meant Deerfield Cable. Motion, we adjourn. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.